What's good? What's going on? JB here with another Cyber Insight live stream, doing another uh, Network Plus Practical Lab. Today we're going to be talking a little bit about DHCP. If you just give me a second, make sure that I got all my streams up, and then we will hop into the goodness. So let me just see real quick. I think that looks good. Yep, yeah, good. There, let me just see over on YouTube. Yep, that looks good. Okay, so today we are talking about DHCP. So the past, what, week and a half, two weeks or so, we've talked about a few uh, basic networking protocols. We've talked about SSH, we talked about Telnet, we've talked about DNS, and we've talked about NTP. Well, DHCP, um, Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol, um, is a protocol that we use quite a bit, both in work environments and then also even within our home. Uh, and what it does is it automatically assigns hosts, computers, PCs on a network, uh, an IP address out of a predefined range. Um, and also, depending upon the type of configuration that we do, uh, can give it other types of pertinent information. So it can also give a computer the right DNS server that it needs to point to. It can give uh, the gateway that your device needs to go through. Um, there's a few other kind of options that are available um, when you go to set up the type of configuration you want to have um, for your devices that need DHCP. Uh, so let's just do a little bit more of a little bit of a breakdown of what the, the protocol is and kind of how that workflow goes. And then we'll jump into the lab and uh, give you some examples. So let me switch over real quick to a diagram that really breaks it down super, super easy, very simple. Um, one of the main things to know right off the bat uh, for DHCP is it uses two different ports. It uses UDP 67 and UDP 68. UDP 67 is going to be anything that's coming from what we'd call a DHCP client. So that's going to be any device that's requesting an IP address. Um, and UDP 68 is going to be the response coming back from the DHCP server. So the way that this works is you configure your device on your network to automatically uh, use DHCP uh, versus having a, a static IP assigned. And your device will send out a broadcast message out on its subnet saying, hey, can anybody help me out? I'm looking to get an IP address. And if you have a DHCP server on that subnet, it will respond back with an offer back to the PC or device or whatever it is with an IP address that um, is free within the pool of IP addresses that it has available to it. The PC or end device, the DHCP client, uh, will then respond back and be like, yep, I like that, that sounds good, are you sure that I can have it? And then the DHCP server will send back an acknowledgement at that point saying, yep, you're good to go. And at that point, the DHCP client has a new IP address that will help it get to wherever it needs to go. Um, so a few things to kind of keep in mind with that is we're going to be doing that on devices that need IP addresses, which are normally going to be workstations and stuff like that for devices that you want to always make sure you know what the IP address is. So something like a printer or um, some other type of device where you're going to have some very, very static controls for it, you can go ahead and manually set the IP address on those types of devices. So let's take a look. We'll hop into Packet Tracer and uh, we'll set up uh, a very, very simple DHCP configuration. You can kind of see how this, this works from scratch. So let us move over to Packet Tracer. Now, what we're going to be doing with Packet Tracer is very simple. We're just going to use a switch. Not even going to really do any configurations on the switch because we're all we're going to be looking at this from the perspective of it all being within one VLAN. Um, and then we'll talk about some more complex scenarios after that. 
Then we'll go to end devices, so to DHCP clients. And then we need a server that will act as the DHCP server. So first off, let us go and do some connections here. These are all gonna be uh, straight through connections. Remember, we've kind of been going back and forth depending on the type of devices when we're setting them up in Packet Tracer to make sure whether or not we need a straight through or crossover cable. In this case, all of the connections, since they're going back to a switch, are gonna be straight through. So let's go like that. And, oh, sorry, didn't mean to click like that. Let's do another connection, fast ethernet to the next port, and then one more, fast ethernet to the server. Okay, so that's gonna take uh, a minute or two for these ports to end up coming up on the switch. So we can go ahead and start configuring the DHCP server. So first off, let's make this big so you can see this. Maybe make it a little bit bigger. Okay, if you remember, whenever we're doing any of these types of configurations, it's gonna be on the desktop. We're gonna set the IP configuration, the static IP configuration for this server. So let's go 192.168.1.1. .1. We'll give it a subnet mask of 255, 255, 255, or otherwise known as a slash 24. And that should be good for that. Now, if you remember, we have all this list of different types of services that are available on these servers within Packet Tracer. So we're gonna look at DHCP, and at the moment it is turned off and it is on the interface that we wanna use. So we're gonna create a new pool and we're gonna call it JBC pool. Now let's look at some of the options that we have to set in here. Um, we can set the default gateway, which is important for any type of DHCP client because they need to have the gateway to be able to get off of their own VLAN or subnet and get to um, other networks. We have uh, DNS servers, which are important. We need that to be able to do domain name resolution as we learned um, in one of the labs last week. Um, and then you kind of have a few different things here where you can set the scope. And the scope within DHCP is gonna be the IP address range that you want to uh, be giving out. And then once the specific IPs are within that scope and they're, they're, they become, let me think how I wanna word this, they end up being put into a pool. And with the pool, uh, you just have different IPs being taken out of there. You can also do different types of reservations from a security perspective. So if you want to make sure that only certain types of devices or certain devices are actually pulling um, DHCP IP addresses, this isn't an option here in Packet Tracer, but you can definitely in most normal uh, DHCP servers have some type of configuration where you have a ACL that has a whole bunch of different MAC addresses and if a device attempts to pull a DHCP address and it's not on that list of allowed MAC addresses, then it won't get an IP address. That's actually not a bad idea for something to do on your home network if you want to add a little bit more security. Um, I've also seen that used in operational environments, especially with um, VoIP phones, because a lot of times you're, you'll have your call manager actually offer up IP addresses out of a DHCP server. And you want to make sure that only certain types of devices are actually um, getting those IP addresses from your VoIP servers. So, or I should say from your VoIP call managers. So let's see. Uh, so we're going to do a start address here. Let's go 192.168. Let's make it kind of fun, I guess. Let's start with... Um, 10, we'll see if this works. Actually, let's mix this up. We'll see if this will work at all. Uh, 172, no, let's, let's keep it simple since we're on the same subnet. 192, 168, 
1.10, we'll keep it a slash 24. Maximum number of users, we'll change that, we'll go to 40. So let's see if we can add that in here. Okay, we'll turn this on. Now, uh, this means that the service is now running on the server itself, but we haven't turned on the clients to be looking for DHCP addresses yet. So let us go and do that. Oh, we got some comments coming in. Hey, how's it going, man? Good to see you, uh, you checking in. You checking in from your laptop or from your phone? Because I'm sure watching this on a stream on your phone probably is not so hot. Okay, let's see. Let us go and enable this. So remember, uh, same thing when we're doing the IP configurations on the computers. We are going to go desktop, IP configuration. We can go, oh, actually, before we do that, let's just check something real quick. So we're going to look and see what we got for an IP address on here. So IP config um, is a basic way of looking on a Windows machine. And you'll see at the moment that we do not have any IP address assigned here. Um, a more in-depth configuration command that you can run is ipconfig forward slash all. And that's going to go a little bit more in-depth and also tell you um, the DNS servers, DHCP servers, a little bit more information. So um, if you want that, I normally do that. I do the uh, forward slash all compared to just the IP config. So let us go and enable DHCP on here. We'll go back here. So see, we have this option here of static or DHCP. It says requesting IP and says it was successful. Okay. So the one thing that I noticed with this off the bat is that it gave me dot two. There is something weird with packet tracer. Um, with it not letting me move or remove that original pool that they have in the DHCP server. So DHCP worked, but it didn't use the pool that I wanted it to use. Um, so let us go and take a look at this now. I mean, we saw it through the GUI, but we'll go and run this command again just for fun. So IP config all, and you'll see that has an IP address, it has a gateway, and it knows what its DHCP server is. This is important because when it comes to uh, DHCP IP addresses that are given out by the server, they have normally a certain lifetime associated with them or what they call a lease. And that lease can be configured to be, you know, anything from a very short period to a longer period. And it's important for the DHCP server to know where it needs or not the DHCP server. It's important for the DHCP client to know where it needs to point to um, so that it can renew the lease and it normally will do that before the time that the lease runs out. In most cases, uh, the D DHCP client, when it goes to renew, will more than, I'd say generally, will keep the same IP address that it had before, but you never know, some things do happen. And if it loses that lease and for some reason, doesn't uh, try to renew beforehand, the DHCP server could free up that IP address in the pool and hand it out to another uh, DHCP client. So let us go and we'll do this one as well. We'll go and we'll take a look. Again, IP config on the second client, all, and you'll see that that does not have any configuration yet. We will go and turn on DHCP. Again, requesting an IP address, so that worked. And if we go back and run this again, we should see that we have the IP address. Very, very basic, very simple. This is what happens on your home network for the most part, unless you actually are configuring static IP addresses. Um, so it's just kind of good to know uh, kind of how that communication happens back and forth as far as with the request and the offer and the fact that it's broadcast out to everything on the subnet and the DHCP servers on the subnet and will respond back. I did want to walk through a few different scenarios though. It's a little bit more in depth than just this to explain what happens um, both if you wanted to run this on a Cisco device 
And then also what you do in, in the event that your DHCP server doesn't reside within the same VLAN or subnet that your hosts are on. So let me close out of this. And we are gonna go and switch back over to Safari for a second. And let me bring this up. Okay, so um, let's talk a little bit about how we do this on a Cisco device. So if you see here, and I'll highlight this, the, to do this on a Cisco device is very, very simple. Um, there's not a lot of configurations. Really what we're gonna do is we would create a pool name, make that whatever you want. Then you specify what um, the subnet and mask is for the DHCP pool. Again, you can set the uh, default gateway. Um, you can set the DNS server. Uh, you can also set the domain name. I mentioned the lease before here on the Cisco device. You can set the lease here. I think the lease is zero and 12, which means 12 hours. Um, and then it's important, you can also exclude certain IP addresses. So maybe you don't want to start with the beginning of the subnet because you're using that for management purposes or those are IP addresses that you're gonna have on different network devices. And so you want to ensure that those aren't used. You can exclude those IP addresses as well. So you already see here on the Cisco configuration option, there's a few other things that we didn't have within the very simple uh, options that are available within Packet Tracer. So we can add a domain name, we can set a lease time, um, we can set the uh, lease period and we can set excluded IP addresses. So as I mentioned, um, when we're talking about doing this in an environment where we actually have to get off of the local subnet and go someplace in a different network to uh, get where the DHCP server resides. We normally would put a certain configuration on each of the particular VLANs um, called a IP helper statement. And this, in essence, is a DHCP relay agent. So underneath each VLAN, you can put something, let's see, like this diagram right here has an IP helper address. And in essence, what that ends up doing is the router will take your packet that's a broadcast and modify it so it becomes a unicast message sent directly to the DHCP server that the router knows about. And it kind of acts as a, as a proxy for you to be able to get the IP address. So that's one important thing to mention um, whenever you are deploying uh, a DHCP server in an environment where you're gonna have multiple VLANs uh, you want to ensure that you are putting the IP helper statements there so that everybody who needs to get an IP address can do that. Well, I think that is about all I wanted to cover for DHCP today. If anybody has any questions, um, you can go ahead and hit me up in the comments. Um, I appreciate everybody checking out these videos. I've been getting really, really great feedback on them. Um, if you do enjoy it and it is helpful for you, please hit the like, subscribe, and notification button if you're watching it on YouTube. Um, drop in the comment section any uh, other topics that you want me to cover. I'm kind of just moving through all of the different Network Plus topics. Um, so I'm just going to keep doing that until people come up with some, uh, some other specific things. And probably some of the specific things folks are, will want to come and uh, check out are probably, you know, stuff that's already in the network plus. So um, if nobody else has any other comments, then we're gonna wrap this up for the, this evening. Um, hope everybody has a, a good rest of the week and go get at it, keep studying, and uh, we'll talk soon. All right, bye.